married Ashen. She was born in London of an Irish father and a Norwegian mother. Having left school at the age of 15, she began her training as a painter first in Munich, Florence at Paris, and then in London. In the 1950s, she began working with the medium of enamel, uh, which because of its unique translucent properties inspired her to render the shifting effects and color of sky and sea on both large and small scale objects. She has been able to fire up to 30 different layers of enamel on one single piece of metal. Uh, when five are usually considered sufficient. She has also developed the technique of placajor enamel, a method in which uh, there is no metal base to back enamel, so the light may shine through like a stained glass window. Merit Ashen has devised a way of twisting length of wire into a honeycomb of cells rather than soldering little strips of metal or piercing a solid sheet of metal in the traditional fashion of plicajour. On the occasion of the exhibition Five Centuries of Treasures from the Worshipful Company of Goldsmiths London, in 1971, she was one of the select few contemporary enamelists to be included in the exhibition and southern years of enamel at uh, Wartskis. As one of the most distinguished uh, enamelists of our time, Merit Ashen has been president of the Society of Artists Enamelers, Babs, the oldest family of Parisian jewelers. They came originally from uh, Soabea in southern Germany and became prominent in France making court jewelry. The business was started in Paris in 1725 and flourished throughout the 18th century. In 1797, Jacques Eberhard Bab married uh, Marie Nicole Minier, daughter of the Parisian court jeweler Paul Nicolas Minier, and taking the name Babst Minier became court jeweler under the restoration. Between 1814 and 1820, he remounted Napoleon's jewelry for um, Louis XVIII, and in 1825, he completed the crown and swore for the coronation of Charles X. As a consequence of the political events of 1848, the post of uh, crown jeweler was abolished, but the firm, under the direction of Charles Babs, joined by his nephew Alfred, the son of his brother Constant, continued to do business under the name of Babs at New York. When Charles Babs died in 1871. It was carried on by Alfred and by his two cousins, Jules and Paul Babst. Alfred Babst was a very talented jeweler designer, and to his hand must be described most of uh, the parures uh, which were remounted for the Empress Eugene. After his death in 1879, his son uh, Germain Babst joined uh, Lucien Felice, while uh, Jules and Paul Babst, together with Jules' son Armand, started in 1880 a new maison and traded under the name J. and B. Babst and Son. Belperon, Suzanne. French born Suzanne Belperon moved to Paris to study at the École des Beaux-Arts, Arts, where she learned and developed her ability to draw and design. In 1918, she began designing for the Parisian jewelry René Boivin. She collaborated with Boivin for approximately a decade, and then in 1933, she began designing for Bernard Hurst, one of the most important pearl merchants of the time. During the war, Bernard Hurst was deported, and in 1945, Suzanne Belperon joined a partnership with his son, uh, Jean Hurst, the firm with premises at 59 Rue de Chateau Dean came to be known as Hearst Belperon. John Hearst was in charge of its financial commercial aspect, while Suzanne Belperon looked after the artistic side of the business. The jewels she designed were characterized by bold and pure lines, devoid of uh, superfluous adornment, matte and shiny surfaces. Precious and semi-precious materials were frequently used, such as frosted rock, crystal and diamond, stained blue chalcedony and sapphires. The firm didn't have an in-house workshop so most of Belperon's designs were executed by the highly skilled Parisian workshop of Grand Edard. Suzanne Belperon refused to produce an item which was not perfect in every way, and it was not uncommon for her to return a jewel to Grand de Darte because it did not meet her standard. Until the end of her life, Suzanne Belperon continued to design striking jewels, which she never signed. Usually a clue of authenticity of Belperon jewels is provided by fitted cases stamped hers Belperon on the maker's mark for Grand Edarde. Boucheron the firm Boucheron was founded in 1858 by Frederick Boucheron. He opened a shop in the uh, Palais Royal, an area which housed numerous Parisian jewelers. He rapidly gained recognition and success, and in 1867, the first time he exhibited in Paris, he won a gold medal. Later, he won the first prize at the Philadelphia exhibition in 1875. Following success, the French government in 1876 granted him the cross of the Légion d'Honneur, and in the Paris exhibition in 1889, he was awarded another first prize and the cross to officer of the Legion de Honor. 
More prizes followed in 1900. In 1893, Boucheron moved to 26 Palace Vendôme, the first present premises and formerly the residence of the Countess of Cassiglon, one of the favorites of Napoleon III. Frederick Boucheron was the first jeweler to move to the square, which has since become the world center of um, Haute de In 1902, Boucheron opened a branch in Moscow, which closed at the beginning of the Russian Revolution in 1917. After Frederick's death in 1902, the firm was headed by his son, Louis, who continued the firm policy for, of expansion abroad. In 1903, he opened a branch in London at 180 New Bond Street, where it still remains today, and founded Boucheron Company Incorporated in New York. He continued to take part of numerous international exhibitions, Lien, Milan, Madrid, Zaragoza, Brussels, and the firm continued to uh, re-up medals and prizes. In 1930, Louis Boucheron was uh, summoned to Tehran by Reza Shah Pahlavi, Pahlavi, the Southern and One Night's Treasure, which stood as century for the uh, currency Iran. He was then nominated official expert and guardian of the treasure. After 1936, Louis Boucheron was assisted in the dir- uh, directorship of the firm by his two sons, Gerard and Fred. And since the 70s, the firm has been headed by Gerard's son, Elaine. During the firm's successful 130 years of business, it has built up a continuous to increase its list of illustrious patrons. The Maharaja of Patiala, the Imperial Family of Iran, the Royal Family of Saudi Arabia, the Begum Agahan, members of the British Royal Family, the Sultan of Brunei, Princess Caroline of Monaco, and a number of personalities from the world of entertainment. In recent years, Boucheron has increased also a number of sales points. A start was made in Japan, where six shops were opened in 1973. Another shop was opened in Geneva in 1982, and in uh, Gstaad in 1986, Hong Kong in 1988, and Milan and Cannes in 1989. In 1988, Boucheron held a retrospective exhibition at the Musée uh, Jacquemart André in Paris to mark the first 130 anniversary. Boucheron's jewels have always come by the high quality of workmanship and design. Recently, the firm has created jewels set with rock crystal combined with precious gems. Boucheron jewels are mainly signed Boucheron, the initial B, in um, Gothic character. Brogan, John, a London jeweler and goldsmith, partner of the firm Waterson and Brogdon from 1842 to 1864, when he took over the premises at 16 Henrietta Street, Covent Garden, and continued to run the business independently under his name until 1880. His work was mainly in the antique styles. Assyrian and Egyptian motifs were among his favorites, but themes from classical theology and the French or Italian Renaissance were also exploited. He exhibited at the London and Paris exhibitions. Eight. His archaeological pieces at the Paris Exposition Universelle impressed Castellani. John Brogdon signed his pieces with the monogram JB, or his sig- signature in full, Bulgari. A leading Italian jewelry from a Greek region, founded by uh, Sotiri Bulgari, a skilled silversmith renowned for uh, renewing the ancient local tradition of engraving. Sotiri emigrated to Naples in 1879 and finally settled in Rome, where he opened his first shop in Via Sistina in 1884. Twenty years later, he opened another shop in Via Condotti, a shop that still remains the flagship of the firm, and was joined in the business by his son, Costantino and Giorgio. After a long time spent in France, Giorgio dedicated his life to creating a Bulgari style in gold and silver. His brother, Costantino, embodied years of research and study in the reference book Argentieri, Orafi, Egimari, and Italia, an authoritative work on the Italian art of goldsmithery. After World War II, sons and nephews continued in the family tradition and Bulgari acquired international name. In the 1960s, the first shops outside Italy were opened in New York, Paris, Geneva, and Monte Carlo. In the 1980s, more Bulgari shops opened in Europe, London, Milan, Munich, Saint Tropez, and in the Far East, Singapore, Hong Kong, Osaka, and Tokyo, with the opening of a second showroom in New York on Fifth Avenue. Today, the firm is run by Giorgio Sons, Paolo, and Nicolo, and their nephew Francesco Tripani is managing director. Bulgari jewels are usually signed with the full name of the firm in Roman capital. And today, that's all we wanted to discuss. Stay tuned for future podcasts. Goodbye.